This is Twit. Apple plans to offer a bundle of about 25 TV channels this fall on a service that would compete directly with cable TV companies, according to a report in the Wall Street Journal. The offering would be anchored by ABC, CBS, and Fox, and would be available on all Apple devices, including, of course, the Apple TV. The service is expected to cost between $30 and $40 per month. Joining us to talk about this is Andrew Wallenstein, the co-editor-in-chief for Variety. Welcome to you, Andrew. Hi there. Thank you for joining us today. Now, the, the journal reported that NBC Universal, which owns NBC, USA, and Bravo, is not part of the service Apple is putting together, at least not yet. And why is that? Well, it, according to what the journal reported, and I have to admit I have not uh, confirmed this, but if the journal has it correct, there's some bad blood between Comcast which owns NBC Universal and Apple over the previous round of negotiations between the two companies over a similar service. Let's also not forget that what Apple is doing could potentially be competitive to Comcast, given Comcast is the biggest cable operator in the country. Here comes Apple with a product, a cheaper product, that very well could induce some cord cutting. Hey, Andrew, any clues in terms of who else Apple is speaking to here? And in particular, I'm wondering uh, in, the, in the sports world, any talk of the NFL network coming to this? I haven't heard specifically about the NFL network. From what I understand, from uh, what I've read, from people I've spoken to, uh, they're talking to all the usual suspects. Let's not forget that you know more than 90% of the major content out there is controlled by about eight or nine different companies here in Hollywood. And you know, what will be interesting to see is if Apple is going to launch with something like 25 channels, who makes the cut and who doesn't? Sports would have to be something that Apple is heavily considering. If you'll notice, really the only competing product that's already out there, which is Dish's Sling TV, has ESPN. And ESPN is a Disney company, and Disney and Apple are tight. So you have to imagine that ESPN is a consideration here. Now, Andrew, uh, you know, I get nervous when Apple uh, fails to get along with the likes of Comcast because they're probably going to buy, um, you know, Time Warner. And then what's going to happen is that they're going to have a huge uh, market share uh, for providing Internet connectivity. Uh, is there a risk that they would somehow be able to block Apple uh, programming, uh, given that they consider it competitive? I, I don't think so. When you think about the sensitivity going around net neutrality and the Title II issue, it would be an act of insanity for a company like Comcast to actively block uh, another company trying to come in over the top. I mean, it's basically a, a regulatory worst case scenario. Uh, Comcast would not be able to handle the backlash. Andrew, what about pricing models here? Are there any clues in terms of how much this base service with, with roughly 25 channels would cost? And then do you think Apple is going to tier anything here? What are some of the clues that you're seeing? Well, the Wall Street Journal is reporting it's about $30 to $40, which is which makes some sense. It's a bit more expensive than Dish's Sling TV's similar product. Um, my guess is it's probably going to end up being a little more robust as a channel package than the Sling TV product. To your question about tiering, yes, I do think, and again, this is just pure gut going. I'm going on here. I wouldn't be surprised to see Apple engage in some tiering here, perhaps, for instance, on the sports front, where an NFL network type product could cost a little bit extra. Uh, the tiering makes sense because they want to keep that base tier as low a price as humanly possible. But on the other hand, they want to give customers options to say if they are sports fans, if there is a sports tier, to pay a little extra without doing what is basically the mistake of the traditional cable package, which is bundling all the sports that inflates the price, that creates uh, some frustration out there among average consumers who don't necessarily want to pay so much to get sports that they don't want. Now, Andrew, um, you know, of course, Apple recently lowered the price of Apple TV to $69. And the, I think the conventional wisdom is that they're feeling a little bit of uh, competitive pressure by lower cost options and even, you know, superior options out there to Apple TV. 
Um, do you have a sense of whether that uh, conventional wisdom is, in fact, accurate? Why do they lower the price of Apple TV? I, I do believe that conventional wisdom is accurate. Uh, I think Apple lowered the price in response to the success of Google Chromecast, which is still cheaper than the lowered price of uh, the new Apple TV. Uh, I think also there's been some speculation, and I think there should be some truth to this, that basically Apple's just trying to get rid of Apple TV inventory and that perhaps... Uh, we could see a new product come to market, either an updated Apple TV or perhaps, you know, there's been this endless and endless years of speculation that Apple TV could, there could be a whole new streaming product, perhaps a, a dongle based product like Google Chromecast or something like uh, Google's Android TV, which is kind of a, you know, OTT operating system for televisions. Who's to say that Apple could even come to the market with this long-awaited television product that has been endlessly speculated about? So uh, either way you look at it, there's, a, there's good reason for Apple to lower some price on Apple TV. Yeah, Andrew, I like the uh, the discussion on the devices here and the formats. So, so just to be clear, what we're talking about today is some sort of content package that Apple is working on, correct? And this would work on what? The existing Apple TV product, uh, as well as, I assume, the, the iPhone, the tablets, Macs, etc. Um, are there any clues that it would go beyond that? That, that, that a full-blown standalone, well, I shouldn't say standalone, but a full-blown dedicated Apple TV hardware product is coming? Uh, there, are, at this juncture, are no clues. I'm referring to uh, a lot of past reporting that I don't think has quite ever materialized. But, I mean, there's just been endless amounts of information out there, clues in the marketplace that Apple has been working on some variation of standalone product. And I don't think anyone out there is ready to conclude just yet that Apple has given up on that. 